In 1895, a physics professor in Bavaria, Wilhelm Röntgen, discovered X-rays almost by accident during his experiments with cathode ray tubes. His breakthrough caused an international sensation as scientists around the world awoke to the breathtaking clinical implications and rushed to expand on his efforts. In St. Louis, researchers avidly advanced the discovery. In 1905, Washington University's fledgling medical school moved into a new facility, proudly announcing that it housed a large operating room which offers unrivaled facilities for instruction and operative surgery. And something new and exciting, a large x-ray machine. By 1908, x-ray courses were being taught, and by 1910, the single x-ray machine had expanded into a precursory x-ray department that would be headed by brilliant researchers, like Russell Daniel Carman, who made landmark findings in such areas as ulcerating carcinoma and R. Walter Mills, whose crowning achievement was his work on the form, size, position, and functional behavior of the real stomach. During World War I, under the leadership of Edwin Ernst, Washington University staffed a 1,350-bed hospital in Rouen, France, where they x-rayed 30,000 patients and, using safer methods developed by Ernst, maintained an astonishing 98% survival rate. On the other side of the world, Sherwood Moore took the reins of the department and became part of the research team that perfected cholecystography, performing the first radiographic visualization of the gallbladder in humans. By the late 1920s, Röntgenology had a new name, radiology and was taking shape as an academic discipline. It was then that surgery head Everts Graham, in partnership with Sherwood Moore, proposed the creation of a radiology institute at Washington University that would eclipse all other programs in the country. The General Education Board agreed to endow the operating costs if other funding could be secured for the building. That other funding was generously contributed by Edward Mallinckrodt Sr. and in gratitude, the Institute was named for him. The Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology, MIR, opened in 1931 with Sherwood Moore as director. The microscope is now indispensable in the teaching and practice of medicine. I feel that the X-ray will have just as wide a scope. And finally, I am convinced that this institution is better fitted than any other to take up and carry out this broader conception of X-ray work. Sherwood Moore. MIR earned an unsurpassed reputation for excellence during the following decades, thanks to the brilliant work of its talented, dedicated staff, like Wendell Scott, a diagnostic radiologist, and Gene Kiefer, who developed the first American laminograph, and physicist Arthur L. Hughes, who implemented the construction of a cyclotron. In 1949, Sherwood Moore was succeeded by Hugh M. Wilson, whom Sherwood Moore once referred to as an almost ideal person. Wilson recruited a talented complement of full-time staff members and began to develop specialty areas, including one of the first neuroradiology sections in the United States. In 1950, Michael Terpogosian was brought on to develop the radiophysics area. In collaboration with specialists in various fields, his early work helped achieve important firsts in brain blood flow studies. There are some who'd have us believe that diagnostic radiology is at its zenith, that nothing remains to be done. He who says that the next quarter century will not be as fruitful is not fully aware of the creative capacity of the human mind. Problems that are now in the process of development will be the accomplishments of tomorrow, and our dreams of today will be the research problems. Radiology, 1953. A new section of radiation therapy was created, and a 2.4 million volt betatron was acquired for treatment of deep-seated cancers. Wilson retired as head in 1964, and after an exhaustive search, his successor was chosen, Juan Tavares, the first full-time neuroradiologist in the United States. Ultimately, 
he came to be recognized as the father of neuroradiology. Tavares's goal was to turn MIR into a major center for research and clinical studies, and he succeeded. He formulated a plan for dividing diagnostics into six largely organ-based areas, creating the first official subspecialties in radiology. In 1965, MIR added a section of nuclear medicine, and radiochemist Michael Welch from the Brookhaven National Laboratory joined in 1967. His group developed radiopharmaceuticals and automated the production of compounds used routinely. In the early 1970s, Michael Phelps and Tur Pergosian, assisted by many others, imagined and built devices that became an entirely new imaging modality, positron emission tomography, or PET. One of Tavares's greatest accomplishments was convincing the powers that be to expand MIR's physical plant, an impressive project announced in January 1969 with a price tag of $3 million. Tavares resigned to return to the East Coast in 1971. Under his leadership, MIR had grown in size, quality, and international reputation. The man named as his successor, Ronald Evans, only 31 years old at the time, turned out to be a great choice. As new areas developed and positions on staff became open, Evans often filled them with younger, less experienced physicians. And like him, many became widely known and respected. The first ultrasound equipment was added in 1973 and MIR developed a training program for ultrasound technologists. In 1974, MIR purchased its first CT scanner, one of only a half dozen in the entire country. The work done set the standard in America and in the world for CT and MRI from the early 1970s forward. These faculty worked closely with colleagues in medicine, surgery, pathology, and pediatrics to transform healthcare, and they did. William Murphy. Evans appointed Carlos Perez head of radiation oncology in 1976. Perez worked and traveled tirelessly to make sure that MIR remained on the forefront of new technologies. In October 1981, MIR marked its 50th anniversary. 500 people were on staff, 150 of them MDs or PhDs. The Institute performed some 300,000 scans annually and was one of the five largest radiology departments in the world. Evans set a new goal for MIR, to make it a national resource for radiology and medicine. Like Juan Tavares, he would succeed. By 1983, nearly half of all radiation therapy in the St. Louis area was being done by MIR physicians and MIR's three other divisions were flourishing as well. The largest was diagnostic radiology. The fastest growing was nuclear medicine. And the newest was radiation sciences. A separate interventional radiology section was created in 1987, and a young MIR resident and fellow, Dan Pikus, was at its head. Working with Siemens, the group developed new interventional equipment and techniques. Distinguished scientist Marcus Rakel and his team of researchers perfected PET imaging and developed virtually all of the techniques for mapping the human brain, from stereotactic location to measuring blood flow and metabolism. A 1992 Newsweek article, The Decade of the Brain, showcased MIR's PET research. And publications touted the sophistication of MIR's radiological computer facilities as the world's largest and most advanced, the gold standard by which others are measured. Big changes loomed on the horizon, however. Barnes Hospital embarked on a merger with Jewish Hospital, and ultimately, after tense negotiations, the technical side of the Institute's operation was sold to Barnes. In 1999, Evans left to become president of Barnes Jewish Hospital, and Gilbert Yost was appointed interim head. Yost had used his computer skills to build MIR's information system, 
and helped guide the transition of radiology from film to digital imaging. In 2001, he agreed to become permanent head of MIR. Yost's mission was clear, to foster the development of a diversity of research and encourage clinicians and researchers to work together, focusing on translational research. Mallinckrodt has a huge research operation for a radiology department. Ron Evans was supporting that, and under Gil Yost, it has continued to grow. I don't know any other radiology department that has exactly the kind of research operation they've got here. Robert L. Grubb. In 2003, the School of Medicine announced Biomed 21, a strategic initiative aimed at sustaining the school's top-tier position through the next decade. A new MIR project became an integral part of Biomed 21 in 2008, the Center for Clinical Imaging Research, designed to bridge the gap between the clinical and research elements of the department. Increasingly, PET was being tested or used for important clinical applications as well, to find the best treatments for cancer and to identify those who would benefit most from surgery. Mark Minton worked on another use for PET, imaging amyloid plaques in the brain to detect Alzheimer's disease in its very early stages before cognitive symptoms were evident. By the early 2000s, Mallinckrodt had succeeded in making film an outmoded technology. Radiologists could view images on high-resolution computers and send those images to referring physicians within seconds. And Carlos Perez's wish from his earliest days at MIR came true. The medical school created a separate radiation oncology department. Under the leadership of Gil Yost, MIR has continued to grow, becoming one of the leading radiology centers in the world with strong clinical programs and groundbreaking research. Commenting on Yost's tenure, Joseph Ackerman, the William Greenleaf Elliott Professor of the Department of Chemistry, said, Gil Yost has been a marvelous leader for MIR, keenly aware of the need to keep MIR on the cutting edge of new developments in the field of imaging. And Yost, reflecting recently on Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology, its history and its future, said, I have no doubt that this is one of the best radiology departments in the world, and I feel proud and lucky to have been a part of its history. But I'm convinced that the Institute's future is bright and that the best is yet to come. <laughs>